Well, folks, in today's video, I'm going to be running all of my HO scale steam locomotives. This is a video that's been requested by a fair amount of you out there uh, ever since I actually did a video exactly like this back in the earlier days of my channel. Um, but since then, uh, the collection has grown a fair amount, so a lot of people were requesting an update for it. So uh, here it is. Anyway, um, I'm going to be pretty much running every engine in this row right here. These all run, well, at least to some extent. Uh, unfortunately, all the ones you see up here, uh, these do not run for one reason or another, so I'm not going to be trying to run those ones. I just brought them out for display. But yeah, pretty much everything in this row right here, I will be trying to run. So anyway, without further ado, let's get started. And we begin right here with possibly the smallest steam engine in my collection. Uh, it's not uh, in very good shape, as you can see. I got this in a junk lot. It was in terrible condition. I, I didn't even think I could uh, get it running. I actually did build a cab for it at one point, but uh, yeah, it's not uh, not so great. It definitely does need some uh, attention at some point there. But anyway, um, as you can see, it uh, definitely does run. Well, there we go. So that's a runner. Uh, it's probably not the uh, pride of my collection there, but... Uh, Ah, heck, with a little bit of work, it might be a beauty someday. <laughs> anyway, next up is another uh, little 040. This is a lifelike one. I uh, picked this thing up at a train show years ago. Uh, it's a great little runner. I'm uh, quite impressed with it. Lifelike actually did a fine job with this. It's got a can motor, and uh, yeah, it even doesn't do too bad at the lower speeds, which is kind of impressive uh, for uh, an 040. You like, can see it actually is not that bad. So uh, yeah, this is uh, definitely one of my favorite uh, 040 steam er engines in my collection there. So uh, there's that one. And uh, then we got another one. I believe this is a River Rossi, possibly an AHM. I don't know to be honest there, but uh, in any case, uh, it, uh, well, apparently doesn't run. <laughs> Last time I was running this, I, I thought it did work, but uh, it sounds like it's got a drive gear issue. So uh, I guess we'll plant that up here with those future uh, project there. Don't know if this one runs or not. I'm pretty sure it does. These 040s are quite straightforward. So uh, I think it will, uh, it will go there. And as we can see, it is in fact a runner. Let's uh, switch directions here. Yeah, it's not even bad. I haven't uh, run some of these in a while, so uh, yeah, I'm not entirely sure. But uh, that one seems to be uh, quite quite good there. Uh, next up, we got this one. Um, I picked this thing up for ten dollars at an antique store. I couldn't believe it. It wasn't a runner, and then I think I got it running, but though it had a quartering issue. But as I remember, it did run, so uh, let's see if uh, it's still doing that. Oh, I saw something there. Well, yeah, you can see it's uh, it's going there. Let's give it a little more power. Yeah, it's running, and uh, let's see, we've got reverse too. Okay, no reverse, but uh, that is uh, a runner at least to some extent. I don't really know what to expect for $10, but yeah, heck. And uh, next up is this little uh, German Fleischmann locomotive. I got this in that Etsy lot uh, just a couple months ago. Uh, this one does run. Uh, it's missing parts, so there's actually a guy who uh, might uh, hopefully send some. Uh, I'll have to look into that. But anyway, um, in any case, uh, last time I was running this, it, it was uh, doing okay there. Let's give it a little bit more power. There we go. That, uh, that one certainly needs work, but it is a runner nonetheless. And next up, we got an old Lima engine. Uh, these are usually pretty tough. I'm pretty sure uh, all of these, all the ones in my collection run there. So uh, yeah, we'll uh, get this one uh, set up. And uh, there we are. Yeah, sometimes if they've been sitting for a while there, the brushes uh, stick to the commutator. But uh, yeah, once you get it rolling, it goes. So there's that, and uh, this next one is sort of unique because this is the possibly the only working British engine I have in my collection there. Um, it doesn't work that well. I, I actually bought this for a parts engine, but a lot of people were actually telling me it's somewhat rare. It's not in very good shape, so I don't think it's worth much, but it, uh, it does go not very well, mind you, but it's a runner nonetheless. And uh, next up, we got one which is uh, sort of special. This is uh, actually one of my dad's locomotives, which he had as a kid. And uh, this one uh, pretty much broke. Uh, the motor was completely fried on it, but I was able to replace it with a small can motor. Um, now, it's a, not a 
ideal motor there, I would like to replace it. Um, but uh, as you can see, it, uh, it doesn't struggle to run there. It's mighty fast. That's why I want to get it a new motor. But it is a runner nonetheless. And uh, I usually have it on display here because it's kind of one of my more uh, special engines just because it's, you know, been in the family for a while. This next one, uh, I actually bought this fairly recently. A lot of people haven't seen this uh, run before. It does run. Um, some people on a live stream request requested to see it there, so I did run it then. And uh, if we give it some power, you can see it runs just fine. It's, uh, it's an old AHM, and uh, yeah, it's, it's decent. You probably could use a little bit of fresh oil and a bit of wheel cleaning, but uh, other than that, uh, it's not really that bad so uh, yeah, I'm quite happy with that one it has a tender too but I need to sort out the uh, linkage for that and then uh, here we've got another Lima engine although this one uh, cosmetically is definitely in better shape uh, as I remember I think this one does uh, run so uh, let's give it some power here yeah, sort of similar to the other struggled a little bit but uh, this one actually doesn't run uh, too bad it even uh, spins down when I cut the power. So, uh, yeah, there's that. Um, next up, we got one. This was another junker, which uh, I was not very optimistic about. Um, but uh, I actually did manage to get this thing running. Uh, it looks awful, but, uh, hey, it does run nonetheless. This is also an old uh, River Rossi there. And uh, if we give it some power, you can see it goes. It even has a working headlight. So there's that. It would probably be nice if I could uh, get some replacement parts for it, but uh, yeah, what the heck, at least it's a runner. Um, this next one I got running, um, although everybody might want to put in their earplugs in advance because uh, this thing is pretty loud. I don't know why. I think there's a bearing issue on it, uh, but if we give it some power here. It's actually not running too bad today. Maybe it's in the other direction. It does that squealing stuff. Well, it's running kind of rough, but there's no squealing, so that's new. But anyway, there's that one. It's kind of an odd steam engine, but yeah, I kind of like the unusual stuff there. And this is a Santa Fe Tyco Mantua one. I fixed this up on the channel. The uh, traction tire on it, unfortunately, uh, went kaput, so I need to find a replacement for that. Um, but in any case, it does go. And if we flip the direction here, it does it. So there's that. Uh, next up, we've got an old uh, model power one. Uh, this actually uh, was one of the ones I uh, was supposed to repair for m and Rails. I ultimately did, but I got to keep half the locomotives that I repaired. And uh, I put quite a bit of time into getting this one all sorted out. The uh, tires, the metal tires, have basically come right off the plastic wheels there, so I had to glue them on. Uh, and if I remember right, I did get it going, but... Uh, I can't remember what kind of running condition it's in, if any. I don't even know. Oh <laughs> yeah, okay. It's a, it's a runner. Just uh, need a little encouragement there. So there's that. It's uh, it's not bad considering what it was before uh, I got my hands on it there. So uh, yeah, I can't remember who this one's by. It might be a model power. Um, yeah. Anyway, this next one's an old Bachman. Can't remember if it runs or not. Uh, in any case, uh, I picked this thing up in uh, maybe 2012. I don't know. I was uh, quite a bit younger, and I found it on eBay for 13 bucks. And uh, well, apparently, it's still going. I'm sure, got my money's worth out of this thing. I ran it quite a bit back in the day. Just cut out there. Yeah, it's doing it. Fair enough. Not like I said, $13 loco. Can't expect too much. Now, uh, this next one. Uh, now, this next one I'm going to uh, actually stop and uh, put on the tracks with uh, both my hands there because it's sort of a special one. It's my uh, HCW Railways 909 locomotive, and uh, I bought this one earlier, but I just want to be really careful because it's got a lot of really uh, fine details on it, which I just don't want to risk, so uh, 
get that done. All right, so we've got her all set up on the track and uh, while I got it set up, I also decided to put its cars on. Um, this one's really special to me because this is the uh, tourist train which used to go by my uh, grandfather's house back in the day when I was a kid. So this very well is probably what got me into trains to begin with just from seeing that for basically my entire life. And uh, yeah, I just figured why don't we hook the rest of the train up there. It also happens to be probably the most uh, expensive train in my entire collection, so I want to be quite uh, careful with it there. It's uh, very special to me. Anyway, uh, we're going to uh, get it going here. And this is a brand new engine, so of course it, uh, it runs very well. I mean, <laughs> look, it doesn't even draw like half of a quarter of an amp. It's ridiculously efficient, and uh, this is one I really like. It's got all the uh, operating lights in the front, but if you look, it's actually cabin lit, and if you look very carefully, you can see the firebox is even lit, so it's uh, it's quite a detailed engine there. And uh, here it is with uh, its whole train, which I don't even know if I've uh, shown this all in a video. It's definitely been run in a few live streams before, but uh, yeah, this is definitely one of the more uh, special pieces of my collection. Anyway, we're now going to run uh, this locomotive, which I believe is an old American Flyer locomotive. I uh, built this out of two different locomotives because uh, they both had parts which were uh, missing there. So I combined the two and made uh, one uh, working locomotive. And uh, if we set it up on the track here, it should go um, anyway there. Let's give it some power. Uh, well, I, I guess it doesn't go. I don't know. <laughs> it wasn't that long ago I fixed this thing up. I don't know what exactly uh, changed, but uh, I don't know. Something's not going there. It doesn't seem to be picking up any current, so there's some sort of an electrical problem, uh, apparently. It's too bad. I actually uh, really like this locomotive. It's all uh, die cast there, and it actually is a small unit which uh, pumps smoke out, which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, in any case, I guess that uh, that one doesn't go. Doing these uh, little videos though, where I uh, run all the engines actually uh, are very good for uh, finding out what runs and what doesn't run because, uh, I don't know, sometimes it seems like things can just sit for a while and I don't know exactly what changes but uh, they just won't start so I don't know, maybe a solder joint broke from uh, heat changes or something like that, who knows. But in any case, uh, we're going to run this one. This is another uh, Lima there and uh, these are these are pretty sound little engines usually so it's probably going to struggle for a moment, and then I bet it will fire right to life. As if I can get these wheels on right. I don't know what's going on with those. Yeah, we don't need it. <laughs> Let's give it some power here. Yep, just as the others. Not bad. Now going to uh, run this one right here. This is a uh, Bachman engine which I picked up for uh, $40, which really wasn't a bad deal in my opinion because uh, it's a DCC locomotive. The only unfortunate thing about it is that it only takes DCC power. Most uh, engines with modern decoders can take both DC or DCC, but uh, this one can only take DCC. So I'm hoping that it's either programmed to the road number or number three. Otherwise, I'm not sure what to do. Anyway, uh, we're going to go over to our controller here. We're going to put some power in the track, and hopefully it will respond to three. Ah, oh, well, there we go. So, uh, yeah, there it is running. And uh, if we bring it back here, you see, it's actually a fairly uh, smooth runner. I'll put it back and forward again here. Yeah, even got a nice little headlight. So there's that. Now we're going to run uh, this locomotive right here. Uh, this one's got something sort of special about it, which is that uh, it's actually a sound-equipped locomotive. It may be the only uh, sound-equipped steam locomotive I actually own there. And uh, if we get it all uh, set up on the track here, I'll be able to uh, show you that. Anyway, I've had a little bit of a problem with the uh, connector coming out on this thing for some reason. I don't know what exactly is causing that, but... Uh, Anyway, when it's all uh, connected properly, it does uh, it does go. So there it is, as you can see, and uh, even has a little uh, reversing light. Check that out. So there's that. Anyway, next up we've got. Uh, this engine right here, which is a uh, Tyco Mantua. I picked this thing up for $5, which was an exceptional deal. Uh, now it didn't run very well, and it still doesn't run flawlessly, I have to say, but uh, for a $5 engine, I mean, what can you expect, right? And uh, cosmetically, it's not even really missing much. Like it's in uh, pretty decent shape from that standpoint. So uh, with a little bit more uh, work on it, I'm confident this could actually be uh, 
quite a gem of a runner and uh, it's already it looks great so uh, there's that uh, it might be missing a traction tire though so i think it had a bit of a derailing problem but uh, in any case if we give it some power it uh, does go it's even got a uh, working headlight make that a semi-working headlight <laughs> Well, I guess that went out, but anyway, yeah, work in progress. And uh, the next one is pretty much an identical engine, although it's in the uh, good old red, white, and blue there. Uh, it's a uh, Spirit of 76, Spirit of America locomotive. And uh, this thing uh, did not run at all well when I got it. It was uh, kind of rough, actually, but uh, I was before the uh, 4th of July video, I uh, spent a fair amount of time uh, trying to fix it up there and uh, it was running okay uh, by the end of that so uh, I'm not sure if anything will have changed but yeah this one's not bad at least it's a lot better in comparison to the other one it's gotten a little stuck here there we go this one uh, does have a genuinely working headlight so that's nice. Yeah, not bad. The biggest problem with this one is that it was missing weights in the back, so uh, it doesn't have uh, perfect uh, electrical contact with uh, the rails, but it's another work in progress. It's also missing a fair amount of parts, which I would like to uh, replace on it eventually. And uh, we've got this one. This was a dirt cheap River Aussie. Can't remember exactly what I paid, but it was under $15 at least. Uh, I don't have a tender for this one and the linkage is gone so I'm gonna have to find a little wire so that we can actually uh, see it run on this little wire right here so you can uh, see this one go here uh, I don't know what ac actually happened to the linkage but uh, in any case if we uh, just give it some power here you can see that it uh, does in fact run when uh, a wire is connected to it so there's that this one's a work in progress i actually just bought it a uh, boiler cap uh, a couple months ago there and uh, somebody sent me a tender for it so if i can get that linkage back on there we'll be in business <laughs> anyway on to the next one which is uh, sort of special this is one of my dad's uh, steam locomotives it's uh, unfortunately a 1980s bachman and a lot of these have uh, issues with the nylon gears including this one uh, I was able to correct a lot of the uh, issues that it had, but uh, it definitely doesn't run flawlessly. I don't even know if it still does, but uh, yeah, I've sunk a lot of time into trying to restore this one. Uh, definitely more than it's worth, but it's worth uh, more in sentimental value than it is in monetary value. So uh, there's that. Anyway, and uh, if we give it some power here. That was just... I guess it does run. Oh, good. I guess my efforts uh, two years ago still have paid off. Not bad. This thing was completely seized a couple, of, a few years ago before I got around to it. So uh, the motor, in fact, was completely fried. I actually took a motor out of a diesel, which uh, you're not really supposed to do because it had a gear on it. But uh, Jerry rigged a whole bunch of stuff and managed to turn it back into a runner. So hey, what the heck. And uh, we've also got this one, which uh, happens to be uh, pretty much identical to the other one. Although uh, this one has the uh, linkage, so if I can get the proper tender for it, we can definitely run it. So I wasn't able to uh, locate its actual tender. I just found this other River Aussie tender. Uh, it's going to look kind of ridiculous, but it should get the job done. Anyway, if we give it some power here, you can see uh, it does run. I'm, uh, I'm not a big fan of the uh, tender linkage for uh, electrical contact on these old River Aussies. I found uh, the one on my uh, grandmother's 1951 Hiawatha is actually a much better design because it physically plugs into the locomotive. Um, but uh, yeah, this has uh, always been a little bit problematic with uh, some of these River Aussies. But it does run nonetheless, so uh, what can you say? Next up, we've got a... Uh, Mahano slash IHC locomotive, and uh, we'll get that all set up on the track there, along with its uh, custom painted tender. Uh, this was sent in from a gentleman by the name of Anton Bruce, and I guess this is sort of like his uh, railroad there, so he sent one of the engines out of his collection, and uh, yeah, it has uh, all the branding. And uh, these old Mahano slash IHC locomotives, these things are. Uh, 
pretty much for what you'd pay for them back in the day. They're pretty much built like tanks. These are very good runners. So they're actually one of my favorite brands of steam locomotives because uh, I find uh, Mahano did a good job at, uh, they're, they're, they've got a pretty good amount of detail on them, but they, uh, they also seem to last a very long time. I find almost any Mahano or IHC steam engine I've had uh, seems to uh, run pretty well without too many problems. They're not flawless, but uh, they're, they're not bad, I'll say that. Anyway, we've got uh, another one uh, right here. Uh, this one's in terrible shape. Uh, the uh, original owner definitely did not take good care of it. Uh, they uh, didn't lubricate it or anything like that. Uh, at least I think it's this one. I got two from the same lot there and one of them was pretty bad, but I'm pretty sure it's it's this one here. It, uh, it does run, but I think uh, I think it could probably use some work. Yeah, you can see it kind of inconsistently revs, so it has uh, some sort of a problem maybe with the brushes or something like that. I don't know. Most of the other, every other one I have like this seems to run all right, but yeah, that one's uh, a little bit, a little bit crude. Uh, this one, however, I believe was a decent runner. My apologies for that, folks. Somebody was just at the door. Anyway, uh, like I was saying there, uh, I re as I remember, this thing was a decent runner when I got it there. It's not too bad. Fair enough. Even uh, seems to be able to do like a bit of a, a low speed there, so that's nice. It's really not bad considering I paid, I don't know, like 20 bucks for the thing or something like that in a lot. Yeah, I'm happy with it. Uh, anyway, this next one's uh, sort of interesting. It's uh, a bit of a unique model that I picked up uh, at a train show for something like $15. It's a uh, partially die-cast, partially brass model. So you can see this top part uh, right there. The boiler is all genuine brass. Uh, the other parts are all die-cast, uh, but the original owner painted them up to uh, look like brass. Uh, it's not exactly what I would call indiscreet, but in any case, uh, if we set it up on the track here, I think this was a decent runner when I was able to, uh, when I did a little bit of work on it, lubricated some stuff and uh, just did little adjustments here and there. The tender has some funny uh, problems, but well, if we give it power, you can see uh, it, uh, it runs quite all right there. Uh, not even all that loud or anything like that. It's got a good motor in it. That's uh, something I will say about it there. And uh, yeah, it's even somewhat smooth there. It's sort of a strange engine, but uh, eh, for what I paid for it, I'm pretty pleased with it.